All right, YouTube, we've got the first day of the second month, February 3rd. A couple important things happened today. We're going to talk about what we call ground zero, when there are scheduled or unscheduled headlines, economic numbers, Fed statements, or the coronavirus, the U.S.-China trade deal. We're going to talk about that specifically like we did during the trading room. A couple questions, though. I get emails about these are highlights and these are great, but what are they of? Trading room that I host for two and a half hours a day goes over this stuff as it's happening. The charts that you see, this layout you see, you see in real time and goes over what we're thinking as it's happening. These videos are highlights of it. So when someone asks for a trial to the room, I said the best trial you'll ever get for any service are the 200 plus videos you have on YouTube, four or five, 10 minute videos. They're short of almost every day we do in here. So I'm recording this video for, you know, trading room members and then YouTube, you guys get a sense of what goes on in here. And it's the best trial you'd get than a real trial for two days because a lot's going on and you have a lot of questions. So point is, at least subscribe to this YouTube channel. I got to get over a thousand in order to do YouTube live events. Right now we're about 500. So subscribe if you haven't already. Now the highlight for today, what we call ground zero. What does ground zero mean? It means where was the price of the market you're trading right before a market moving event came down the wires? Scheduled events are like an economic number that's important or a Fed statement, Fed press conference, something that obviously is on the schedule. Our job, your job, is to know what's important what isn't. ISM is an important number, second biggest number of the month, comes out the first business day of the month. You don't have to be an economist to understand how to analyze it. In fact, I wouldn't want you to be an economist. I didn't learn my analysis through books. I learned it lucky from, uh, I was lucky to learn it from two really sharp guys who were half economic analysts, half traders, and actually great traders, but they also had that side of understanding central banks and economic numbers and, and being able to teach traders in my early years how to take and digest this information, either to trade it live and in real time, or at least to understand how it could create a trend and a move and validate an opinion you might already have. So it's important to know what's driving the market. ISM, the last few months, number one, understand context. It's been coming in weaker than expected, really weak. And it scared the market as far as how weak the manufacturing in the U.S. sector has gotten. All right? That's number one. Number two, it was supposed to come out at 48.5. That's what's important. Why? Because an average miss is usually half a point. When this number misses, it doesn't miss by much. So around 48 to 49, anything above 49 is a big miss. Anything kind of below 47 and a half is a big miss to the downside. So the expected number is not a secret. The fact that uh, it's been coming in weak is not a secret. The fact that it's the second biggest number of the month shouldn't be a secret. And now isn't if you guys are listening to this analysis. Well, the other important part about trading and uh, you know something that could be a market mover is where is price right before that event hits the wires? And it was in this 56 even area right in here. Why? Because it's ground zero for subsequent support or resistance. No coincidence, stopped there and went back up. And that's why it's important to make sure you know where price of any market you're trading is before that big event came out. Now you could see the reaction was to the upside because it not only missed, but it missed above average to 50.9, not 59, 50.9. That's important for a couple reasons. Number one, it's opposite of where this number has been trending. Number two, it's above 50. Psychologically, above 50 for these manufacturing numbers is expansion, below 50 is contraction. So a nice upside miss, it's above 50, life is good. Generally, when a miss like this for this type of number creates a trend most of the rest of the day in the S&Ps. And I think it would have, and it tried to, but it ran out of gas because of this guy. Well, what the heck happened there, Anthony? As we were about halfway through this break, we've seen on the wires that China reportedly wants some flexibility on phase one of the U.S.-China trade deal. Well, that's bearish because it creates more uncertainty. What do you mean flexibility? Flexibility with what? As Tom mentioned in the room, probably about how much they're going to buy and who knows anything else. It was tough to understand when and where they were going to either shake off this bearishness or continue it. 
in this box right in here. What was important is where was the market right before this? This is that like right here. The ISM was not a surprise. We knew as far as it was a surprise to miss, but we knew it was going to come out at 9 a.m. Central. This guy, you don't know it's going to come out. You certainly don't know what time it's going to come out. Couldn't even anticipate that they were going to ask for that. All right. Ground zero. Where's the price when the market is before the headline hits? No coincidence that it uses it as resistance until, boom, it breaks through it. So it's no coincidence this was support based on that ground zero. No coincidence this was resistance based on this ground zero. And when it got through it, it went and then used it as support for the upside. All right. Now, there was transitional moments in here that this was a failure. This then became a failure. I didn't know what was going to happen in real time in here. But when selling made it easier to go down and leave in this box, we transitioned bearish or bullish rather to bearish. And the move, probability of the move played out to the downside. You can see this market now is starting to trend lower. Problem is with the trend is by the time you realize it, it's too late. So you've had to have been playing this from the short side instead of just looking to sell it right in here. Because you're at the mercy of bounces and rubber band stretches and things like that. And remember this about trading is most of the time people create their opinions, they're too late. When it's obvious to most one of the things I try to say is look for the obvious and do the opposite. When it's obvious to a fifth grader, it's probably obvious to most of the rest of the market. You don't want to do it, even if it might work sometimes. You don't want to do it. Probability-wise, it's against you. So for just a recap of this highlight, first of all, subscribe to YouTube. Secondly, know where the market is before either a scheduled or unscheduled event. Today we had both. ISM was scheduled at 9, came in much better than expected, tested it only because of this Chinese report. And then they tested that, and when they got through it, they were bullish for the time being until they got back south of it, and then you change your mind. What you guys are trading, what we're trading in, these, in this business, whether it's oil, gold, stocks, options, S&P, stock indexes, we're trading something that's constantly changing its mind. So you need to be open-minded to change your mind with it. It doesn't mean every time the market goes from bullish to bearish, you have to be short. Or if you're bullish, you have to be long. But you have to be flexible to understand that it's changing its mind. You're engaged with something that's changing its mind. And if you're a stiff branch, you're going to break and not bend. You have to be able to bend. It doesn't mean short when you're bearish, long when you're bullish. That's too much pressure. That's not how we were trained. You should be bullish and bearish at certain moments. And other times you should be, I have no idea where it's going to go. You don't always have to have an opinion. But when you do, you don't always have to have a trade attached to it. Don't put that much pressure on your strategy on yourself. You're not supposed to have a trade every moment. If you sit down and start feeling anxious because you're looking for a trade, don't. There's a saying, if you have to look hard for a trade, once you find it, don't take it. Let it come and find you. Good luck and don't forget to subscribe.